God is good all the time. May this promise fill us and sustain us in our suffering and in our joy. Welcome to Monumental United Methodist Church in Old Town Portsmouth. My name is Celeste Heath and I am the pastor here. Thank you for worshiping online and participating in this week's service. If you are worshiping on Facebook, let us know that you're here by clicking the like button or leaving a comment below. Monumental has been blessed by your generous gifts. Through your giving, Monumental is able to continue ministry in the community and around the world. If you would like to give to this ministry that we share, you can give through our website or through your online banking bill pay option or through the mail. Thank you again for your generosity. If you have not received your COVID-19 vaccine and your health allows for you to receive it, I encourage you to get it to protect yourself, your family, your church, and your community. Our area is in a very high risk category and the CDC recommends that everyone vaccinated and unvaccinated should wear a mask and social distance while inside. On Monday, September the 27th, Monumental will have its first in-person New Day concert. We are looking forward to this. Dr. Roy Belfield, Minister of Music at Hampton Baptist Church, will be our guest performer. Please call Monumental for a reservation at 757-397-1297. Face coverings will be required. If you are not able to attend, the concert will be recorded and put on our website. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 1 and the Epistle of James. The psalm draws our attention to how the trees live and model a faithful life to God. James lifts up wisdom, which enables us to live in peace, gentleness, full of mercy, and bear good fruit. How are we living this life of wisdom today? May our hearts be open to God's transforming love as we worship and receive the word. Now let us worship and celebrate the work of our gracious God in the world. join me in our call to worship. Who 
among you is seeking the wisdom of God? We long to hear God's word spoken to our hearts. Who among you is seeking God's bright and holy truth? We long to learn the ways of wisdom and righteousness. Who among you is seeking a spirit-filled life? We long to live lives of holiness and light. God grants God's wisdom generously to all who ask. Come near, people of God. Let us worship in wisdom and truth. We will sing together, I am thine, O Lord. If you have a hymnal at home, it is number 419. Sometimes we are weak and indecisive. When the first big wind comes, we lean and break. We plot revenge instead of letting you fight our battles. By our silence and busyness, we let wickedness and ugliness fester and flourish. Today, Lord, forgive us when we covet and lie and when we get caught up in things that displease you. Heal us, direct our paths, and be for us the peace we so desperately crave. Amen. Our Psalter lesson this morning is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. 
but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And from the epistle of James, the third chapter, verses 13 through chapter 4, verse 3, and then verse 7 and 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfishness, ambition, there is also will be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you have, what you get, on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, your double-minded. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Almighty God, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may be filled with your wisdom, that we may grow and be your faithful disciples of Christ. Amen. This week, as I was driving, I listened to NPR and the program was On Being with Krista Tippett as the host. She was interviewing Suzanne Simard, a professor of forest ecology at the University of British Columbia. Simard is the forest ecologist who has proven beyond doubt that trees communicate with each other and that a forest is a single organism. She likes to say that a forest is wired for wisdom and care. Her, her book is called Finding the Mother Tree, Discovering the Wisdom in the Forest. This radio show caught my attention because I had seen Ellen Comstock's coffee table book, The Hidden Life of Trees, and had enjoyed looking at it. The book and this radio program both addressed how trees are connected and that they communicate with each other. Samard's research centers on um, these trees, paper, butch, uh, paper birch, Douglas firs, and western red cedar trees. The research finds that the processes that make for a high-functioning forest mirror the maps of the human brain. She calls the hub trees of a forest mother trees. They take on the characteristics of parenting, eldering, and caring for younger trees. The trees work together and take care of one another around the mother tree of the forest. They have a way of talking to each other that Samard has actually heard with a Geiger counter. And all of this takes place underground. The trees in a forest have a social system, a social network. The older trees have deeper, well-developed roots, and the roots of the younger trees connect to the roots of the older trees. The older trees feed and nurture the younger trees. Why do they do this? Well, the reason is the same as it is with people. There are advantages of working together. A tree is not a forest. On its own, it cannot establish a consistent local climate. It is at the mercy of wind and weather. But together, many trees create an ecosystem that monitors hot and cold. They also store a great deal of water, generating humidity. The community of trees provides the conditions for them all to live well and flourish. If every tree only looked out for itself, many of the trees would never reach an old age. Wind, weather, and heat would kill many of the young trees. The old adage, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, fits the life of a forest because trees know this intuitively and don't hesitate to help each other out. Now this is a very simplistic explanation of the complex life of a forest. But you easily understand that trees have a language and a way of taking care of one another. They realize that their health is directly related to the health of the forest. So in order to be healthy, they have to take care of one another. In the Psalm we read today, the trees planted together by the water are lifted up as the model for God's people. They are strong, healthy, and fruitful. The psalmist connects trees to the life of God's people, demonstrating how similar all life is in creation. Creation can express joy and communicate. In Psalm 96, it says, let the field exalt in everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. For the psalmist, the trees create a community that is healthy, bears fruit, and cares for one another as they were created to live. As Suzanne Simard says, a forest is 
wired for wisdom and care. In the reading from James' epistle, he speaks of wisdom. Wisdom that is peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. James invites us to submit ourselves to God and change how we interact with the world and all creation. This invitation wakes us up to realize that we are works in progress, surrounded by support and grace from God and the community around us. We are dependent on one another. James asks tough questions about our lives. Why do we have conflicts and disputes? What is the cause? What is the state of our hearts? John Wesley would ask, how is it with your soul? We can't always see ourselves, so we need others to walk along with us in our faith journey. John Wesley knew that the life of a Christian was hard and that we need each other for sustenance and support. His discipleship groups were created to give support and seek accountability for growth in the Christian life. These discipleship groups emphasize the need for friends who will help us hold on to the commitments that we make in living the Christian life. When we submit ourselves to God, we begin to see the wider body of Christ as nurturing and caring for us. And as we mature in faith, we become nurturing and caring for others. We are dependent on one another to create a healthy body of Christ that bears fruit. James seems to emphasize bearing the fruit of peace in his words today. It is peace that comes from wisdom. He says, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. James and the Apostle Paul believe peace is the way of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul says, God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Both Paul and James scold their followers those in the early church, for their infighting. James' words of peace, gentleness, willingness to yield to one another, living with mercy and bearing good fruits, could be a second chapter of Paul's 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, which we often call the love chapter. James and Paul had the same message. Those who truly love God cannot fail to live in peace with one another. We don't have to look very far today to find places of conflict, places where we do not live in peace with one another. We don't have to have big fights or arguments to destroy relationships, though. The little things can wear away at marriages and parent-child relationships. Friends can be divided by outside forces or neglect. Much of our daily living can be disrupted by the values of the world rather than the values of Christ. There was a commercial several years ago for a family van. And the father comes with excitement to his children after having completed a tree house for them. The father finds the children in the vehicle playing cards. And when the father encourages the children, come play in the tree house, that he had lovingly created for them, the boys respond with some questions. Does the treehouse have leather seats? Is there a DVD player? Does it have Wi-Fi? This new vehicle has all of these. If we discern this with Christian eyes, we wonder, is this what the family relationship has become? Weighing the attributes of different products, being driven by material possessions. There is inner conflict here, which does not bring peace to the family household. 
Healthy relationships are built with love, mercy, gentleness, sharing burdens, not material goods. We see conflict everywhere outside the home as well. Our politics are flooded with conflict. No one wants to work together. There's much bitter envy and selfish ambition. We, they seek power over one another rather than seeking the nurturing and the caring for the whole community. We see this locally, we see it nationally and internationally. And like James and Paul, we see a lack of peace in our churches. Envy, ambition, power and control are dividing our denomination over issues that some believe will give them the blue ribbon of faith. James saw this type of conflict with Paul and the Jerusalem church. And James worked to bring peace to their conflict so that they could live with more wisdom and love. He brought them together so that the body of Christ could bear fruit. The church is not designed to have winners and losers, but to have unity, even in differences. One of the interesting things I heard and read about the forest and mother trees is that when a toxin enters or threatens the trees, they work together to fight off that toxin or threat. The mother tree will send out a signal to the other trees to put out some kind of blockage to keep the toxins out. Or they will share resources to help heal the damage that has taken place. The trees act as health care to one another. We have toxins that threaten our relationships in our personal lives, in the world around us, and in the church. Instead of feeding and assisting the toxins, we are called to work together to either block out the toxins or defeat the toxins that threaten the health and peace of the church and our lives. Like the trees, if we don't work together, we are not the healthy body of Christ. We will be sick, and we will not bear good fruit for God's people. So this brings us back to James and his call for wisdom. Wisdom that brings peace, grace, mercy, compassion for each other. He tells us to be intentional about who you are as a child of God. Draw near to God. Examine your life as one called to follow Jesus. Care for one another and work together as the body of Christ. The world will give us many messages about who we are to be, but our primary calling is as children of God. And we are to remind each other of this wisdom. Then, like all the trees of the healthy and connected forest, we can sing for joy. Amen. As we begin our prayer time, let's sing together. Make me a servant, Lord. Number 2176, if you have the faith we sing. remembering the culture of violence that seems to be everywhere, the idea that might makes right, the idea that as long as we don't get caught, we're in the clear. We shake our heads knowing that none of this is what 
we want to live with. Controversy and conflict are everywhere, in sports, in your churches, and in our families. Yet you point us to ways to look for strategies that are win-win rather than win-lose. We remember our own traumas, physical and emotional and spiritual abuse, where we were on the receiving end of violence and power and control. Jesus, take from us the grudge that we will not let go, the pain we will not let heal, the sin we condemn in others and most disguise in ourselves. Jesus, liberate us from the hands that care only for ourselves, the eyes that focus on what they want to see, the tongues that condemn the petty but never challenge the powerful. Jesus, join in us the frayed ends of broken temper, the practice of commitment, the practice of touching the tip of our fingers to the hem of your garment. Jesus, love in us the self we despair about, the self we hide, the self we throw at others because we cannot live with it on our own. And when you have stolen this sin from us, liberated our potentials, mended our brokenness, and loved our withered selves, give us the grace to do for others what you have done for us. Show us the ones whom we can reach through personal and church ministries and bless the ones whom we feel are beyond our reach with hope and resources. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, bring us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There will be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And you go out with joy. Amen. <laughs>